All right. Oh, I can't do that. Can't do that. Do I need black hair? Oh, there we go. I think that's everything. I think we're going. We're going. This is happening. Episode 400. It's a thing. Wow. So, hey, there's a person. People are ready. Two people. Man. All right. So, uh, one of the things that we've learned from doing first cup in the morning is that I don't start in with like the good stuff right away. I'm going to give it a minute, let people come in because people are getting notifications right now to say, hey, this event is rolling and it takes a minute for people to go, oh, I got to press that button. I got to do this. I got to do this. And I'm watching people coming in. So, hey, there's Matt. Matt says episode 400. I'm assuming you can all see the chat. So I'm looking forward to talking to everybody. Good evening, Stacy. Hi, Jenny. Uh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Julie's watching. Wow. All right. So uh, I've got this whole list of stuff and more stuff. We're going to talk. Hi, Laura. Yeah, at 400 episodes. Most statistically, most podcasts don't make it past 10. So I was pretty proud when we got to like 20. <laughs> and here we are. 400. Hi, Lessie. Man, we're going to talk about Lessie as we get in. Uh, what is it? All right. So, um, first thing, this is not a sponsor of the show, but if you are able to get this stuff wherever you are going, um, <laughs> Jared, uh, if you can get this stuff where you are, it's amazing. It's super good. It's here at Costco and other places, and it's the best seltzer ever. Hi, Michelle. Um, so those of you that may, may see Jared's ridiculous question, uh, Jared, of course, the host of Marshall Thoughts, would you eat a tarantula? So when Jared did his episode 100, uh, a couple months ago, which was a, a, a great show. And of course, anybody who knows me and, and knows Whistlekick knows that I'm a fan of Jared and what Jared does. And Jared is an instrumental part of Marshall Journal, which we're going to talk about as well, but when he was soliciting questions, thank you, Rebecca. Uh, when he was soliciting questions for his, for episode 100, I wrote in some ridiculous questions, and one of them was, "Would you eat a tarantula?" Because I had dressed, uh, I had just seen like a video or something on Facebook like 30 minutes before that grossed me out about some guy who was eating a tarantula. Uh, hi, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. All right. So people are starting to come in, but uh, let's uh, let's let's get into this. So. There, there are a lot of things that we're going to get to. We've got a lot of notes. The first thing I want to, I want to say though, I want to thank um, a man who's been on the show a couple times, and I, I call him family. He's actually in the next room. Uh, Master Brennan Goodall is here. Um, admittedly, I didn't know he was coming. <laughs> he just showed up, and he's like, "Hi, I'm here." So I said, "Okay, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you on research." and commentary and so uh brendan did you get into your facebook account he's not replying i don't know um <laughs> wow look at everybody coming in uh but yeah you're in cool okay um so i just want to say thank you to him he's gonna help me thank you amy appreciate that uh so brendan's gonna gonna help facilitate in the chat and um yeah so cool to Cool to have him here, have his help, his support. And uh, there are two other people that I really want to thank. And the first one is someone who I talk about periodically with the guests. The before and the after portion does not get much of a mention during the show, but is someone who is incredibly pivotal. And that's Julius, Julius Santiago, who is our amazing audio engineer, just a, a wonderful guy. I don't get to talk to him as much as I would like to, but he's become an instrumental part of the show. He's been with us for well over a year, two years. I think we're coming up on two years now. And he does the editing, he does the graphics, he does so, so much. So I just wanted to say, thank you, Julius. I could not do this without you. Uh, you're a big part of the success of the show. And then uh, certainly not to be forgotten has completely changed the way that we're, we're booking guests and scheduling all of this stuff now is Leslie Trail, who I know is in the chat. Uh, Leslie helps me choose guests and coordinate conversation with guests and offers feedback and she's just been such a wonderful wonderful help and that's a fairly recent thing but she's killing it so thank you I always try to make sure that I thank people um, 
And then I want to thank all of you. This sounds like the end of the show, doesn't it? But it's not. I want to thank all of you for your love, your support, for reaching out. Uh, sometimes I do shows where many of you can tell it's not going well. I'm having a hard time. And I get a tremendous amount of feedback and support from everyone. I get people emailing and Facebook messages. And it's just, it's just great. It's absolutely great. So thank you for all of that. Um, as I've said many, many times, if it wasn't for all of you, thank you, Andrew, if it wasn't for all of you, I would just be some crazy guy talking to a microphone. So, all right. Um, so throughout this conversation, which I have no idea how long this is going to take, right? I don't, I'm, I, I tend to plan things pretty well. This is not planned. I planned episode 200, I planned episode 300, neither of which went anywhere according to plan. So I said, we're gonna wing this one and see what happens. Thanks, of course, to First Cup. For those of you that don't know, First Cup is a show I do weekday mornings. Uh, it airs on YouTube and it's, you know, around 15, 16 minutes. And it's, um, it's just kind of me waking up, uh, having a cup of coffee and answering questions. So I've been doing that for, shoot, close to a year. And I've gotten pretty good at the improv thing. So uh, hopefully those skills translate into this. So, all right. Um, where are we gonna start? Where are we gonna start? There's a lot of things that we're gonna do. Um, I, I wanna start with how the show has grown. So for those of you that don't know, and, and I'm, not, I'm not gonna give out numbers. Sometimes people ask me for numbers. It's, it's like the currency of the martial arts, I'm sorry, of the podcast world. Um, talking about numbers is, is kind of a personal thing. So not, uh, not going there. <laughs> yes, first cup is me in a bathrobe drinking coffee. I did neglect that part. Uh, we'll talk more about first cup later because it's, it's a new development in the, in the, in the last year. So we want to make sure that we, we tie that in. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh, how the show has grown and changed. So I'm not going to talk about numbers, but you know, if you remember, if you go back to those early episodes, uh, prior, I want to say it was through episode 38. It was a Monday only show. We did an interview, released it on Monday and that was it. And I started to look at numbers and, and read advice. And a lot of people were saying, you know, the more, the more episodes you produce in a week, the more downloads you get, the more it boosts you in rankings. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So I said, well, what can we do? And so I tried to do this kind of weekly news format roundup kind of a thing. And it just didn't work. It wasn't me. There isn't enough new stuff happening week to week that everyone is broadly interested in. Excuse me, so that format didn't really last too long. So what did we do? I did the only thing I know how to do, talk. Talk about things that interest me, kind of rant at times. And that's when we started talking about subjects. So I want, I, if I remember correctly, I'm actually gonna bring this up. So I have a laptop here. So I don't want anyone to be offended that I'm looking off camera periodically. I'm gonna keep talking to you. There are actually some things that we're going to do um, when we're done with this section. Hey, Paul, nice one. Uh, Paul, of course, my Superfoot training partner. We will be flying to Florida on Friday to get kicked in the head by Bill Wallace and company himself. Um, But I'm gonna be doing a number of things in conjunction here with my laptop, just pulling up some information because there's, there's too much. There's too much to write down, too much to remember. And uh, like I said, I'm winging it. So I didn't, I didn't write a ton of stuff down and prep this. But the first, uh, when do we start doing that? Oh, I was close, episode 33. And then I abandoned that format after three times. did one November 12th of 2015, November 19th, November 26th. And then I went, these are boring. I don't like them. And then the next episode we did was the Bruce Lee episode where I talked about Bruce Lee. And ever since then, Thursday episodes have been topic subject driven. And this is where I want to shout out somebody else who's fairly new within the last year to helping with the production of the show. And that's Lester. Lester was recently married. So congratulations. And 
on some of the more recent episodes, if you look back over uh, the last, let's say, 50 episodes, um, you'll see that we ended up with some in-depth, research-driven episodes. Uh, for example, the episodes on, on Judo, uh, Jigoro Kano. Lester put those together. He did an amazing job. We worked to get a little bit together on the outline. And what he gives me is just, it's gold. So uh, he's taken a step back, but we'll be bringing him back a little bit. He'll be doing some research. So we've been doing all that. And this is where I'm going to throw at you the first trivia question. I'm going to give you the opportunity to look at this. I'm not going to answer it right away. But I skipped an episode. There is a missing episode number. Which one is it? So I don't want, well, I mean, let's, let's do this. Uh, first person to post it in the chat gets um, $10 gift certificate. We'll do that. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm not going to tell you how to find it. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm just going to look and I'm going to watch and see who, uh, who gets it. Where is it? So, um, oh, we got our first answer. Lester is the man. Uh, it's not 109. So, um, there was some talk about Grandmaster Choi and doing some interesting research on that. No, there's a 42. Uh, you guys can't just name all the episodes in order. I've got 42. I've got 43. No. Nope. So uh, I'll watch. If it comes through, then then we'll find it. Um, <laughs> Jared saying 42, the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Uh, great answer. Wrong answer. Other ways that things have changed and grown as we look through the... Uh, just the show. I and mean, remember, this show started April of 2015. So it's it's four years. It's more than four years of my life that I've been doing this. And I've had the opportunity to talk to the most amazing people. And I don't just mean famous people. I don't just mean successful people. I mean amazing people. When you look at the stories that we tell, the the stories that we're looking for are good stories, stories that resonate for martial artists. And that doesn't just mean featuring famous people. It means featuring people from all walks of life, all styles, all ages, all backgrounds, different countries. And it's it's been a pretty powerful experience to tie all of that together. And so when, when we're looking at who to bring on, and Leslie's a huge part of this now, it's not just who who's the most famous person we can bring on. Because I'll be honest, there are people that have some, some infamy or notoriety or just big followings and they want to come on for the wrong reasons. We get approached all the time. People want to come on and, and push their book or push their event or honestly, people want to come on just to add it to their resume. Apparently the show's reached that point. But, you know, that's not... It's not what it's about. It's about helping everyone realize that martial artists have more alike than not. It is not 306. Um, we all have a tremendous amount in common, and I think that that's important to remember. And really, as we go through, as we're telling more and more stories, it's really to further that, to make people realize that, yeah, we have a lot in common. So, so it, Jared's asking a great question. Any non-movie people you dream of interviewing? And first off, if you're a fan of Martial Arts Radio, please check out Jared's show, Martial Thoughts. It's a great show. He does some things a little bit differently. He asks some different questions. He's got a different interview style. He did an amazing, Jared, what was it? Three parts uh, research episode on Musashi. Hopefully I'm getting that right, that it was three parts. It was utterly amazing. Um, I, I've got a 306 here, <laughs> Andrew, um, I'm looking at it. So yes, there's a 306. 
I can't promise that everything's in every podcast app that you're looking at, but I'm, I am the keeper of the official list. So Jared did this amazing three-part series on Musashi. Uh, Miyamoto Musashi, of course, the author subject matter of the Book of Five Rings. If you haven't checked that out, you probably should. But he went deep. He did some really cool stuff. Jeff is saying Martial Thoughts is our podcast is amazing, and it is. I listen to a number of martial arts podcasts, and actually, I think I saw that as a question that's coming up for First Cup tomorrow morning. So we're going to check that out. We're going to answer that question tomorrow morning. And... Uh, I got another answer here. And yes, Stacy has it right. Episode 268 is listed as the non episode. I have no idea what happened. Um, I think I just got excited and skipped it for some reason. So, Stacy, uh, email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com, and I'll send you your $10 gift certificate. Now, here's something that I wanted to do. So, we're going we're gonna to fire this up now as we get over here. Uh, I'm going to give everyone a discount, a really good discount, a discount better than we do pretty much any other time. And here's the kicker. It's only going to be during this show. So, boom, boom, boom. How does, well, if you listen to the show, you know that we do 15%. Julie's asking, does that mean this is really episode 399? Yes, except there was an episode triple zero. So I feel okay calling this episode 400. Uh, so if you're, list if you're a uh, frequent listener of the show, you know that we do a 15% off discount. Podcast 15 gets you 15% off. Well, I'm going to do something just for fun, just to celebrate, just tonight. How about 20%? And all right, well, guess what? I'm not going to tell you what the discount is. It's at least 20%. Use the code 400. Anything at all at whistlekick.com. You're going to save at least 20%. You'll find out what the discount is. And one of the less expensive items that we have are the 2019 commemorative items. And I'm going to be honest, if you use the code that I plugged in, sorry if you're not listening, if you're not watching this live, if you use the code that I plugged in for this commemorative hoodie or t-shirt that we've got going over there, and there is a women's cut t-shirt, some of you ask for that, um, we're pretty much going to break even. So there you go. All right. So check that out. I'll remind you of that. The code is 400. Brendan, help me remember that and remind people periodically. All right. So we talked about where the show has been. Let's talk about where it's going. Whew. It's getting warm in here. I don't usually wear a hat. I have no hair. And for those of you that are used to watching me, I trim my beard way, way down. Hello. Thanks, bud. All right. Um, so where are we going? There are no plans to really change the show in any kind of dramatic fashion. Uh, the show is working. The numbers are good continues to grow. We're attracting bigger and bigger guests. And everyone seems to be happy with how things are going. Of course, I'm always working for feedback or looking for feedback. Uh, the wording shows up backwards on the hoodie. Yes, because we are using the front facing camera, which reverses things. I can't do anything about that. Of course, if you buy the shirt, uh, <laughs> it won't be reversed. And if you go to whistlecake.com, you'll see it correctly. Um, I am overheating. I will probably take this sweatshirt off. This is the um, uh, the gold edition hoodie. It's very stretchy. It's very comfortable. Um, Jeff, email me about that. I have no automatic way to do that. Um, we can figure something out. Yeah, there's a map on the wall. I like maps. Um, ugh. All right, this is coming off. This is another shirt on the, on the, on the website. Okay, um, so where are we headed? Where are we headed? There's a, there's a lot. There's a lot that I want to do. Uh, I'll be honest, I would love to turn this into a video show, but that requires a tremendous amount of work, uh, far more resources, far more money. And at this point, the resources aren't there. 
as evidenced by the fact that I record in my living room. Whistle Kick is doing well and we're growing, but as you might imagine, if I'm going to travel to somewhere or fly someone in, the costs grow exponentially. I mean, you're looking at pretty much a minimum of $1,000 a week to do that. So <laughs> uh, people are having some, some fun with the fact that I took off a layer of clothing. Um, <laughs> yes, I would have to start doing wearing more than a bathrobe if this was video. Uh, I'm only wearing one t-shirt. Uh, I did not get a whole wardrobe out. I've, I've done that before, but anyway, uh, I want to do video. And if you, if you check out what we've got going on YouTube right now, you'll see that we've started putting ads up. We've started monetizing in that way just to see if that's going to be enough. What, what is going to happen? I mean, we've got a huge number of episodes and people like them. So can we turn that into money? I don't know. We're looking at it. Uh, we're also exploring some other things because for those of you that follow us in the martial arts radio Facebook group, whistle kick martial arts radio behind the scenes, you should check that out if you haven't. Uh, I posed the question a month ago, two months ago, how would people feel about advertising? And the response was at least neutral, but for the most part positive. So we're exploring that, you know, of course the first goal is to use the podcast to drive whistle kick and everything that we do. But if there's an opportunity to promote another brand, um, we will do that. Uh, Gabe and Jenny, uh, we are, we are working on that. So Gabe and Jenny are posing the question, um, around sparring gear. And if you've tried to buy sparring gear, you know that we don't have a lot right now. And, um, let's just say there were some circumstances beyond, beyond our control that, uh, have been incredibly frustrating to deal with and, uh, doing my best, doing my best to rectify that situation. Um, many people would have to, would, would be flogged to get, uh, should be flogged, honestly, uh, for that. Andrew, sorry, no size eight geese yet. Um, the geese are still mm, turning. They're still percolating in the, in the sales channels. They haven't taken off yet. Um, I mean, I know there are a lot of you that want a lot of things we want to do. There are a lot of products I want to build. And to be honest, generating new product is, is one of my favorite things. So I wish we could do that all the time. There are new things in the works. You know, we're always looking for, for the next big thing, but beyond video, it's really, it's just intended to be holding steady, holding the course because what's going on seems to work. I'm getting better as an interviewer. I'm getting better at identifying topics and I'm enjoying the show. I'm enjoying the guests. Uh, you know, it gets us to people like episode 398, Jimmy Pedro last week. You know, that was an utterly amazing episode. If you don't know uh, the judo world, you may not know how big of a deal he is. And you, you may not know that he's had a hand in training um, the two most successful people to come out of judo into MMA. Uh, yes, we do have black geese. They are avail available at whistlekick.com. So, what else? What else? What else is on my list? What do you want to see next? What are your favorite moments from the past? I'll pose those questions to you who are watching. And as those answers come in, I'll read some of them on the air. And I'll move on to some of my next things here. We will move on to questions at some point in the, in the near future. So don't worry. I know we've got some questions that I've got written down here. I know a lot of you have questions and we'll get to those. Um, Kara saying you do a great job of listening when I can have learned so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate having met you and that I get to meet, see you again periodically. Um, Jared's asking non movie interview. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Andrew says, selfishly, I like hearing about instructors that are local-ish to me. And you're not the only one. Quite a few of you feel that way. And that's why if you go to the website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, 
We have a number of different ways that you can navigate through the episodes. Of course, you can go in chronological order. You can look at them by style, and we do have them by region. So anywhere outside the U.S. is sort of by country. Within the U.S., it's by state. So you can check out who's nearby. Okay. Um, now, something you can put on your calendar. We finally confirmed just last week the third, fourth, the fourth annual Whistlekick Martial Arts tra free training day. Uh, correspondence interviews from across the world, New World Traditional Martial Arts News Outlet. Um, and we're doing some of that stuff at Marshall Journal. I'll talk more about Marshall Journal in a little bit. What else we got here? Um, <laughs> uh, blooper reel. Um, there aren't a lot of bloopers, and honestly, most of them are boring. Most of the things that we edit out... <laughs> Thank you, Brendan. Um, Brendan's got my back. He's saying, no bloopers when you never mess up. Most of the things that we cut out of the show are the guest stumbling or, honestly, me stumbling. Um, you know, sometimes the guest will give me something that, that takes a moment for me to tie together. Um, I know you'd all love to think that the transitions that I make between subjects are all brilliant and on the fly, but sometimes they are contemplated and so we'll you know we'll take a little bit of time out so training day training day has a date uh november 16th 2019 it will be at woodstock union high school woodstock vermont uh brendan if you could drop a link to that in the chat there is a facebook event for that if you search for whistle kick training day whistle kick free training day uh laura's saying can't wait she's been an instructor at the la all three Laura, have you instructed at all three? Which is pretty cool. Not a lot of people have done that. Uh, Laura's also always supportive and part of the branch off, breakout contingent of Team Whistle Kick, known as Team Smashy Smash. Uh, <laughs> she and Stacy um, hang out breaking things and have a lot of fun doing it. So I appreciate it their support and and certainly love supporting them uh yeah so training day for those of you that aren't familiar with that event it's a ton of fun uh, andrew says day after your birthday what a great gift and here's what we do i leverage all the wonderful connections of of people who've been on the show uh jared yes you were at the first one um and we just bring people together and train you sign a release form there's no money there's no, it's not, it's not corporate. It's not anything other than what I love to do, which is get together with a bunch of people who love martial arts and train and teach. And we do a few things differently. The first thing that we do differently is anyone who comes to teach is required to train. I've attended a lot of events and when the instructors aren't teaching, they're not training. Well, that has the possibility of leading to ego and you know that I'm not a big fan of ego so that's why we do that nobody gets paid nobody pays to be there uh, the school is I'm, I'm not sure if they're completely donating the space but it the very least will be reduced and we will cover that expense uh, there's sometimes an insurance expense uh, when are you going to travel to do some of some of the interviews come see us i would love to travel and you know as we were talking about it's a question of of finances to if, if you if you think about what a business trip is like for any of you that's what the show is i love doing the show but it's still a job so to uh to get out there and travel around it's a big deal uh, matt that link might not work because there may be some other stuff in it. Uh, Brendan had a comment there, but if you just, if you search. So, uh, training day, RSVP to that event, check it out, stay on your radar. We're gonna start naming instructors. I'm gonna start reaching out to instructors this week and seeing if we can start building that roster. Uh, we've grown every year, hope to continue to grow. And this year the event is closer to restaurants and, and lodging. So we're excited for that. 
All right. How have I grown or changed during the show? That's a question that comes up a lot. People ask me that sometimes as part of the show, sometimes just personally. I've changed a lot. I've grown a lot. And I think it's been a huge part of who I am as a martial artist. Um, I'm a pretty shy person. Not everyone believes me when I say that. But this show has forced me out of my shell. It has forced me to step up, to step into a role that I honestly was not looking to have. Uh, Jared says he's working on coming up. Well, if you want a teaching slot, my friend, you know that you, you have one. Uh, Jared's an exceptional instructor, uh, great Aikidoka. And uh, yeah, he's a good man, good friend. So how, I have a hard time talking about some of this stuff with, with how the show has changed me without, without seeming in humble, immodest. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, because a lot of, I mean, just the fact that there are, you know, at this very moment, 20 of you watching this, uh, a number of you have come in and left. And to be honest, thousands of people will watch or listen to this in the future. And that's a little weird for me. I live out in the woods. I live alone. I like my quiet time. I like my, um, I like my privacy. But this is something that I've always felt needed to happen. It's something that I wanted to happen. And so I'm doing my best. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, I'm doing my best to support the martial arts, something that has given me so much. And I feel a responsibility. I feel in an obligation. And, you know, we could talk a lot about obligation and responsibility and honor. Today is Memorial Day here in the United States, a day, for those of you who may not be Americans, it's a day that we use to honor soldiers, veterans, people who fought under our flag for whatever reason. And sometimes people politicize it, but that's not how I see it. I see it as people doing something that they believed in to the benefit, to their believed benefit, at the very least, uh, of the greater good, the wider masses. And that's what I'm attempting to do on a much smaller scale for the martial arts through whistle kicking through this show. Martial arts has given me a lot, martial arts in a sense, has made me who I am. So, without it, I wouldn't be here. And maybe that's just the, the figurative. I wouldn't be here doing this show with all of you now. But to be honest, there is a chance that the literal would apply. I look forward to continuing to grow, and I look forward to the new challenges that come with this show, because if you've been listening in a while, you know that sometimes we get a guest who doesn't want to talk. Uh, a guest who talks over me. Uh, a guest who says ridiculous things and I don't always know how to reply. So that's a challenge. And it gives me the opportunity to, to grow and learn and, and be better. And all of you get to hear that. And I'm sorry. <laughs> For the errors that I make, but you know, we're all human. All right. Um, here's another trivia question for you. What is the only two part episode that we have ever done on martial arts radio? Hmm. I even remember the episode number. Um, I'm not sure if anybody has, uh, has checked anything out. Oh, we got, uh, well, thank you, Jeff. You know, you're an airborne ranger. Awesome. Isn't that great? I put my thumb right over the camera. That's super helpful. Let's go over here with that, Jeremy. Um, 400, the code 400. Hi, Felicia. 400 gets you at least 20% off. I'll have to find out what it is at 
whistlekick.com. No, it was not the Victor Moore episode. Victor Moore's episode is one of our best episodes. Jenny, yes. Jenny's right, the Tony Blower episode. Jenny, you'll get a $10 gift certificate, so email me, bam. Oh, Andrew coming in with a slightly different answer, women in the martial arts. So we did do two parts of that subject, but it's not quite a two-part episode because we had two different uh, rosters of people and we tackled slightly different things. But Tony Blower, Tony came on and talked for two and a half hours and I broke it up and there also, what are your thoughts? Whoa, that's a big question, Wrenchy. All right, hold on, we'll pause that. Um, we'll come back to the Tony Blower episode because there was something else that was kind of unique about it that we could talk about, something that, that I think about often when I think about that episode. So, Wrenchy Sergeant, what are your thoughts about going to a tournament or other event once a month, record some of the action Talk to the competitors, instructors, promoters, etc. Show off some products dur during it and make it a monthly video episode. I'd love to do that. Now, here's the challenge. So for those of you who don't know, Wrenchy Sargent, he's been on the show. Uh, good friend, very supportive of Whistlekick. And I'm very supportive of what he does. And part of what he does is he runs the main competitive martial arts circuit. Smart. Um, something main, some martial arts ratings and totals. Oh, I'm forgetting the acronym. I feel like a jerk. State martial arts ratings and totals. I think that's it. Uh, and of course, I get to see him fairly often at main events and even some of the other events throughout New England. But the main reason that, that doing a lot of video footage is not gonna happen there is that in two things. One, in order to get really good footage at an event, I need two people. Uh, Paul Milholland and I discovered that when we were in New Jersey and he was running camera and I was running audio. We really needed two people and it worked well that way. So I'd have to have someone following me around with a camera, which I could probably get somebody to do, do that. But then the thing that would bum me out about that is the team. So for those of you who don't know, I alluded to it earlier, we have a competitive team made up of some absolutely wonderful martial artists. We have nine people on the team, ranging in age and rank from, from uh, let's see, green belt with a stripe, if I'm remembering correctly, for Garrett, and 10 years old, 11 years old, up to adults in their 20s. And then, uh, of course, we've got Laura and we've got Stacy uh, doing their own thing with Smashy Smash. And I don't see them at these same tournaments that I tend to hang out at with, with the, the other members of the team. They're doing different things. So um, I want to support them. When I'm there, I want to coach them. I want to help them be their best. And that's a lot of work. So I want to make sure that they're my priority. I spent years going to events and setting up a booth and talking to people. And I had a lot of fun doing that. But as you might imagine, that's not a terribly lucrative thing to do, especially when you figure in travel. And, and um, of course, I would always throw some money back to the tournament promoter. How do we determine who's on the team? We have open tryouts and we will have open tryouts again at some point at the end of 2019 for the 2020 season. If that is something that is of interest to you, um, I'm not sure, we're, we'll probably put up a Facebook event. So you just gotta, you just gotta pay attention and we'll, we'll put something up then. Uh, it will be after the close of the season, which is early November for the circuits that we have focused on. Uh, there we go. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask a favor now. So here's what I'm going to ask. So you're all on Facebook. If you're watching this live right now, you are on Facebook. And one of the things that you can do on Facebook is leave a review. So I'm going to ask a favor. I'm going to ask a favor. I don't ask a lot of favors. I make suggestions. I say, hey, you know, maybe if you can buy something or throw a comment. But if you could just pop over to Facebook right now and leave a review. Just say, hey, um, I like Whistlekick stuff. If you can go to the Whistlekick Martial Arts Facebook page, just leave a review. And if you can't do it now, that's fine. But I would love, love, love for you to do that because of course those reviews have an impact on everything. It's business, it's all tied together. It's all this big spidery mesh. So, well, thank you, Julie. 
Uh, and then Jeff's saying, uh, put Team Whistlekick up against Team Paul Mitchell. We've got some incredible people on the team. We have some people who are as talented. We have some people who could absolutely get to that level. They need some more time. They need some more training. But yeah, we have some people that I would, I would absolutely prefer to have on my team than some of the members of Team Paul Mitchell. Uh, like best of the best, 5v5. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I have this down as a, a Facebook review mob. Kind of like a flash mob, Facebook review mob. So what's going on? I'm going to... I'm seeing the chat going on here. Let's see what kind of crazy notifications are going on. Oh, this is kind of blowing up here. Um, Nish sharing sharing the announcement. Of course, uh, Nish Nishan Grout has been on the show. Such a great guy, good friend, runs a school locally, and I think we even finally have a date for me to pop over and check out the school. Jordan's in the chat. His son, Michael, is one of the newer members of the team. Been very, very honored to have you on the team. When is the training get together? Somebody will get that. Uh, thank you, Nish, for the review. So let's start with some questions. Some of you have been asking questions. So let's do a few minutes of that. Throw some questions at me. We're about 45 minutes in. Thank you, Andrew. Boom. Give me a question. I've got questions going on here. And I'm going to start with the question... Lessie asked. Lessie asked a question. Who would be your number one pick for a future guest on the show and why? I'm going to answer this two ways because mm -hmm. we've got the, let's call it the obvious answer, Chuck Norris, right? I would love to have Chuck Norris on the show. I would fly to have Chuck Norris on the show. I would go anywhere in the world to interview Chuck Norris. And we're working on that. We're still hoping that's going to happen. Who else? Who else is the... Who are the other people that we might have? I'm going to give you a second. Because it's not a second choice. Because I'll be honest, I don't, I don't know that, that he's going to have. I don't know he's going to be on the show. Some of you guys are like throwing questions at me left and right. Guys, I need, I need a minute to respond to these. Hold, hold your questions for a second. Um, I keep coming back to Ralph Macchio. I would love to have, have Ralph Macchio on the show because The Karate Kid is an important movie in martial arts culture and he was an important figure despite not being a conventional martial artist, despite not being a martial artist turned actor. I thought he did an excellent job of representing what it was like to be a kid growing up in the martial arts when no one else was doing it. So... Uh, we, we've, we've worked on that one. Still hoping it's going to happen. As much as I love Cobra Kai, it's probably less likely now that he's doing that show, but fingers crossed. Uh, where else? What else we got? Uh, favorite injury story from training. All right, real quick. This tooth right here, this one's a crown because I got kicked in the face. I still don't know how that kick happened. Um, it just... It was my freshman year of college. I was at the karate club. This new black belt had shown up and he's, his form was terrible. And that it was a roundhouse kick that traveled this very strange arc that I did not see and he had no control and I clearly did not block or move. I have no ill will against him whatsoever, but broke my tooth in half. So it's a crown. All right, what else we got? Um, favorite kata to perform? If you're not a Japanese practitioner, kata has forms or patterns. Um, Kusanku has been my tournament form for a very, very long time. Uh, I'm playing with some other things, and honestly, I, I, I think the next time I compete will be with a different form. Uh, ever regret an interview? Yes. There have been a couple people. I will absolutely not tell you who they are. Uh, people who... I felt either in hindsight came on the show for the wrong reasons or were not up to being interviewed. 
That's all I'm going to say about that. Which guess was furthest from what you expected? Hmm, that's a great question. A great thought. Oh, I need my list. Jared What's like up? A Chuck Norris follow up on why him? Oh, all right. So Jared asked why Chuck Norris? Um, because he's Chuck Norris. Because it would get ratings, and because when you think of the most notable figures in martial arts, Chuck Norris is the one that has the most name recognition outside the martial arts. And I think that that's something that's important culturally. Chuck Norris adds martial arts cred to anything. We could do an episode, uh, he, he could appear on an episode of Master Chef, and suddenly just his appearance, people would make martial arts jokes. And that says something. There was an episode I did recently that made me feel like it went differently. Who was that? Um, Grandmaster Quinn, no. If you've checked out that episode, episode 392, that one really sticks in my head because it was an exceptional conversation with an amazing, amazing person. And I didn't, I didn't know much. I didn't know what to expect, but there was a lot more depth to that conversation than I would have guessed just based on our emails. And, and that, I don't mean that in any kind of disrespectful way because our emails were very similar to many other emails. But we, what we had with that episode was an example of someone who in voice, in conversation was a lot deeper, a lot more open than they were in email. And you know what? Plenty of people are like that. Uh, let's see what else we got. Hi, Michelle. Billy Zabka. I would absolutely have Billy Zabka, William Zabka on the show. We have reached out to him as well. Uh, oh, hold on. You use the term traditional martial arts quite a bit on the podcast. What exactly do you mean by traditional martial arts versus non-traditional martial arts? Uh, so I use the term traditional martial arts in part because I don't want to use terms like karate as generic terms. And there are people who do that. There are plenty of people who term all martial arts as karate. And you know what? That's just, it, it's not appropriate because it, it, it belittles the differences, the cultural differences of style. And why I, while I don't feel that style should be hard lines, you know, walls put up between people, I do feel that we should respect the differences and value them because that gives us the opportunity to cross train and to learn from each other and explore things in different ways. But when I make the, the term, when I, when I use the term traditional martial arts, it's because the term mixed martial arts also exists. And traditional martial arts and mixed martial arts are very different. They're different in practice. They're different in philosophy. They are different in many, many ways. And I want to make sure that people don't mix them up. Uh, what else we got? When will I compete again? Don't know. Uh, thank you, Nita. Uh, maybe Chuck will interview me. That would be great. I've got a question. Yeah. Do you think we should standardize what it means to be a black belt? So Brendan's asking, should we standardize what it means to be a black belt? Whew. Let's put a pin in that one yeah. because that's going to be deeper. I want to get through some of these questions. Let's come back to that because that's a great question. Uh, what do you think of a martial arts school developing their own curriculum based on a number of arts? What do you think of schools that teach Korean forms? but call themselves a karate school. So first off, if a school builds their own curriculum, I think that's fine. If the instructor has their own reasons for doing so, I think that's fantastic. If it makes sense to them, if it allows them to, in their opinion, teach better things, cool, do it. Let, let, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a free market guy, right? So it, the, the students will tell you if what you're doing is working. And how about people doing Korean forms but calling themselves karate? Um, I have mixed feelings on that, but you know what? 
if that works for somebody, eh, I think it's weird, but I'm not going to say it's wrong. Uh, what else we got? Jared saying he would watch that episode of Master Chef. Andrew got a run. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Kara saying, I love that you get together with other podcasts because now I can listen to a few more. You don't isolate yourself. Uh, no. And in fact, martialartspodcast.com. If you don't check that out, you should. I think we're up to like 10 or 11. So as I bump into and meet other martial arts podcasters, we include their shows. Because I would love for people to find more martial arts podcasts to listen to. And if you find one that you prefer to martial arts radio, if you have a limited amount of time and you listen to Jared's show or Ian Abernethy or somebody else instead, cool. I'm fine with that. Because... I would rather you listen to what works best for you, what makes you happiest, rather than just doing, just support and whistle kick. Uh, if you could change one thing in or about the martial arts, what would it be? Ego. Uh, will I compete in a T-Rex costume? No. Mm, maybe. Uh, hi, Scott. We're going to have to talk about Scott. What's my favorite martial arts-based video game? Street Fighter. How does your martial arts training impact the other things you train and how about the other way around? I am at this point now between parkour, gymnastics, CrossFit, weight training, martial arts, that it's just, it's all just movement. Different movement for different things. And honestly, the understanding of physiology that's come out of CrossFit has helped me better understand my martial arts and some of the things that come from experience with martial arts around force production, AKA moving fast and moving with power have translated very well into CrossFit and teaching CrossFit. How do you believe forms should be taught? Should forms be taught based on the principles and theories of when the instructor learned them or based on the principles and theories the governing organization currently prescribes? It depends on If you are part of a school that belongs to an organization and the school is expected to follow the rules of the organization, then it makes sense that you are training under those rules. Um, I'm not a big fan of organizations because I think that they can get very, very constrictive. But at the end of the day, you should be doing what your instructor wants you to do. Oh, Tekken's a very good game too. Hi, Danny. Let's never stop training. Uh, favorite story to share with students? You know, one of the things that, that comes up, people ask me about my stories, and I don't have these big, fancy, dramatic stories. At least not that I remember. I mean, my, my stories are more gradual and drawn out. I don't have these big, impressive anecdotes. I have... A, a pretty, I mean, I've led an interesting life and I, I hope to continue to live an interesting life. But I don't have these, these jokes or stories that are good to opening, to open a speech. I just, I just do what I do. I've had the opportunity to train with exceptional people, but, you know, I, I've, I've never been thrown through a wall or, you know, broke somebody just broken someone's rib or or you know won a world title or anything like that I, I i think i think that's what makes my story appropriate maybe for for being the host of this show is that i'm kind of a normal guy <laughs> thanks julie um i mean i love martial arts i love training i've done it since I was four years old, but maybe, maybe in that way, my story is more relatable. All right. So Brendan posed a great question about should we standardize what it means to be a black belt? Hi, Kat. Cat wants me to feed her. I'm not going to do that. She can wait. Um, 
Should we standardize what it means to be a black belt? Because of course the heart of many, many, many videos and articles and conversations around the martial arts require uh, people getting mad at each other because one person has done this and somebody hasn't done this and it all really just comes down to whether or not it comes down to the fact that black belt the standard of black belt doesn't exist it exists in a school sometimes it doesn't even exist in a school I do not believe that it should be standardized because who's going to decide I feel that if you can as a martial arts instructor can openly admit that you promoted so and so person to black belt and you feel you you feel that you have done that with integrity you have every right to do that and I'm not going to argue that and there are plenty of people who are going to disagree and that's fine I have my own personal standards for black belt I had a school for a little while. I did not promote anyone to black belt. It wasn't open that long. If I ever taught again, I would have standards. When I visit schools, when I travel, when I train, teach, do I see people who I feel... <laughs> when I... Yes, I see people who I feel do not warrant a black belt. Some of them I feel that way based on my standards, but I also see people based on the standards that seem apparent in the school. I did a whole episode, when in Rome, right? When you're visiting, you play by their rules. And there are people whose rules uh, are inconsistent. Is there any martial art you'd want to study? Yes, uh, all of them. Right now, uh, the, the art that is probably top of my list if I was to get into something I have not trained in it would be Wing Chun basically because I want to I would want to tackle that while I'm still young enough to do some of those dramatic movements and I think it would inspire some some interesting stuff physically for me if you were given a blank check and were allowed to teach however and whatever you wanted what would you teach would you be part of an organization no would you develop your own system? I think everybody in, in some level, in some way, develops their own system. You teach what works for you. Um, I think most people pull the majority of their martial arts understanding from their first system, their first style, and then they add on to that. I am very glad that I don't have to make the decision of what I would call what I teach. All right, it's a bunch of questions. Good, cool. So, another trivia question. So we talked about Tony Blauer, episode 108. Mr. Tony Blauer will be official as being the only two-part episode. It holds another distinction. What is that? What is the other thing that's different about episode 108 with Tony Blauer? All these comments. Todd's asking, what is my primary martial art? <sighs> Cat, it's fine. I'm talking to people. Come here, you want to be on the camera? Um, I'm a karate guy, first and foremost. Looks like Jenny got it first. Yep. Explicit content. Yes. So, Mr. Blower's episode, episodes, parts were the only ones released with a clean and an explicit version. And that was because I, I, I agonized over whether or not to, to edit him. If you've listened to the unedited version, you know, well, either version, you know that there was a lot. The man has a, uh, Jenny, email me. I'll send you a gift, card, gift certificate code. Uh, don't forget, everybody, code 400. Saves you at least 20%. I'm not telling you how much. At whistlekick.com. Uh, I didn't want to censor it. I didn't want to... I mean, I suggested to him at the beginning. I was like, hey, I'd rather you didn't swear a bunch. And he's like, um, F that. 
<laughs> I went, okay, uh, what am I gonna do? And so I thought about just putting it out as is. And then I realized, you know, I I've heard from people who share this show with their children. And so I went through the time to edit two different episodes. And I, I, I did that because I felt it was important. I felt his message, I felt what he shared was really powerful, really important. And I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to shortchange anyone with that. Oh, there's a comment that hasn't made it on here. Oh, no, oh, that's unrelated to this. Wow, look at all these reviews. If anybody hasn't left a Facebook review that would be able to, I'd appreciate it. All right. Uh, fun fact about Mr. Blower's episode. It's also the longest episode we've ever done. I don't let anybody talk that long anymore. My attention span isn't that long. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about martial journal. So obviously it's it's hard to extract Whistlekick from martial arts radio. Martial arts radio is part of Whistlekick. Whistlekick is part of martial arts radio. So if we if we talk about martial arts radio and where things have been, a lot of what happens with the show dovetails into what's going on with the rest of Whistlekick. If you are not familiar with Marshall Journal, you should check out Marshall Journal, marshalljournal.com. Scott, I think you're in the chat. I don't see your picture in this short list of it I get, but I'm guessing you're still here. Uh, Scott Boland, who's been on the show, Sensei Scott Boland, is the editor-in-chief over at Marshall Journal, where we've done, we, we created probably the, the most Whistlekick type writing website. A bunch of people writing. It, it, you know what it is? It's free training day in writing. That's probably the best example I can give. It's a bunch of people writing about martial arts for free for other martial artists. We're currently exploring some ways on how we can monetize it, uh, but the website as it is will always be free and I do not want to have ads on it. The writers are not paid. I'm not paid. I pay for it. <laughs> but it's been a lot of fun. So if you haven't checked out marshalljournal.com, please do. If you're interested in writing, we'd love to have you. That's the beauty of an online publication. We, we could take everyone. You know, we're putting out I mean, I remember when we were lucky to have two articles a week, and now it seems like we're, we're almost up to one a day. There's some, there's some great stuff out there, and we just keep adding more. What's my favorite part of training? Forms, weapons, self-defense, etc. It depends on who I'm training with. There are people that I love working on forms with, people I love working basics with, people I love sparring with. Some of the people I enjoy sparring, I wouldn't want to train forms with them. Some of the people I enjoy doing self-defense with, have terrible basics and I have no desire to work on that with them. Depends on what they're doing, right? Um, you know, if you had the opportunity to um, to go back in time and hang out with Jimi Hendrix and have him teach you something, you'd probably want him to teach you how to play guitar, not make pancakes. Although now that I say that, having Jimi Hendrix teach me how to make pancakes sounds pretty fun. Um, more of my notes. Hey, we're over an hour. Wow. These are my notes. Organic, authentic, improv, vulnerable, wardrobe. Those are my reminders to myself. I have a hard time sometimes reminding myself that it's okay to let you guys know what's going on in here. To be vulnerable. Um... Even non-black belts can write for it too if there is something unique in what you bring and say. Honored to be honored to be included. Yes, Stacy has written over at Marshall Journal, and we don't. I I don't I don't care what rank you have. I don't care what rank you have to be on Marshall Journal. Do you have you trained with everyone who you get to interview in person? Ooh. No. Most of them, almost all of them, but no. What is one technique that you have always wanted to be able to do but have yet to accomplish? Hmm. The 
There, there are a couple kick combinations in Taekwondo that are a little rough. Hey, Rob. Um, my hips don't like them. And I don't work on them. But if I had to pick one, it would be uh, the kicking backflip that Guile does in Street Fighter that I've seen show up once in a while in a tournament. That would be super fun. Uh, at one point in my life, I was able to do a backflip. I'm sure if you put enough money on the table, I could still do it. But being able to lead with one foot is not something I've been able to do. That's a great question. Mm. More, more things coming in. Wow, look at all these people. So cool. I want to thank those of you who have ordered things. The code 400 gets you 20% plus, more than. Funniest moment teaching or training? If you've ever taken a class with me, I, I have a good time. I laugh, I pick on people, I try to make it really enjoyable. And if you don't, I don't care because I'm going to have a good time doing it. But when I think of the funniest moments, they're, they're not, again, they're not these big dramatic things. It's, it's the vibe. It's the, I don't know if you have people that you train with that are just generally funny people. But I've got quite a few of them. And I've been fortunate enough to build some amazing martial arts relationships. People I've known 10, 20, 30 plus years in the martial arts. And when you get together with them, you just, you know each other so well that there's no hiding. There's no hiding who you are, how you're feeling, what's going on. And it's all right there. So when you're with people like that, you might as well have fun. When's the next episode of Riding in Cars with Martial Artists coming out? I don't know. Um, you know, at one point last year, Paul and I talked about what would it look like if we drove to Florida instead of flew. But it, it wasn't so much the money, it was the time away that made it meh, not the best idea. But we would have a lot of content coming out of that if we got a group driving down to the Superfoot camp. Gotta do another one, those are fun episodes. Favorite martial arts seen in a movie? Um, hmm. I'll admit, I don't geek out on fight scenes the way a lot of people do. Uh, when I think about what I love about martial arts in movies, it's the creativity, it's the ability to do things that we can't do in real life and make them seem real. And I think that's why I like Jet Li so much. Jet Li's technique is just, it's phenomenal. And it looks, even though there are things he, he's doing that aren't gonna happen, like um, which movie is it where he kicks the pool ball out of the pocket and then, and then kicks it at the guy and hits him in the face, throat. Um, no, I did not enjoy Kung Pao. I thought that was a terrible movie. Uh, I think that's Romeo Must Die. Romeo Must Die? That sounds right. It's more... I don't know. I don't have a favorite. I love Jackie Chan. I, I love... You know what? If, if, you, if you said I absolutely had to pick one, it would be the latter fight scene with Jackie Chan in... It's, I keep thinking it's Rumble in the Bronx, but it's not. It's um, it's the second one that they brought to the U.S. Somebody will... Mr. Nice Guy? No, not Mr. Nice Guy. Um... Operation Condor? Yes, Operation Condor. Uh, what has been the biggest obstacle struggle thus far in Whistle Kicks history? Not having enough money. You know, the things that I am trying to do with this company... Uh, are big and they're far loftier than our, my meager finances are able to accomplish. 
and I spent some time, a lot of time through 2018 trying to bring on some outside financing and people just don't understand, people with money don't understand the martial arts business and thus they don't see the opportunity and so I'm looking at doing this a little bit differently. It's not going to change anything on the outside but just uh, the trajectory towards funding. I'm using this fancy pen that came from a company that wanted me to order a bunch of pens. It says whistle kick on it. It was free. Uh, where do you see whistle kick martial arts radio in 10 years? Do you want to be the premier martial arts media outlet? Because you could be. Uh, there's a lot in that question. Um, where do I want martial arts radio to be in 10 years? I don't know. I don't know where I want it to be because I'll be honest, I'm not sure that I want to do this forever. Here we are, we're over four years, and I love what I do. But I also know that I prefer to step away from the things that I do before I don't love them anymore. That does not mean there is any plan to stop doing this show at any point, I promise. But at some point I expect there will be other better ways to reach the goals of Whistlekick. Does that mean someone else will host the show? Maybe. Does that mean we get to a certain number of episodes and say, you know what, there's enough wonderful content, we're going to do something else? Maybe. I don't know. Do we want to be the premier martial arts media outlet? Um, I want Whistlekick to be synonymous with quality and martial arts in everything that we can. Content, products, and education. This is probably a good time. I had this written down. So if you don't know, the project that we're working on bringing out right now is called Two Minute Martial Arts. And this is a concept. I worked on this for a while. And Justin Sweeney, Sensei Justin Sweeney, who is actually part of Team Whistlekick, and before that was a brand ambassador, great guy, just graduating high school, uh, headed to University of Vermont next year. Congratulations, congratulations Justin. Um, for the last few months, he has been putting out this amazing content. So there's a lot you can do in a couple minutes a day, and you should check out training.whistlekick.com. We're going to be talking about that more and more, but I think you should go over there and try it. We're doing this nice and short intentionally. It applies to everyone, all styles, all ranks. And I think that you could see some exceptional stuff from it. Hi, Michelle. Uh, answered that. Do you ever watch a martial arts movie and see a move that you don't know how it happened then grab someone in the room and feel the need to figure it out? No. But I know plenty of people who do. Uh, oh, so apparently that pool ball scene is from Kiss of the Dragon. That sounds right. Um, 10 years, episode 1000. Uh, I would love for us to do some movies. There, there, I, have, I have some very interesting movie, movie ideas that I'd love to get off the ground that would incorporate a lot of you. Um, but again, resources. Yes, Justin Sweeney is awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll be honest. I've gotten through the things that I wanted to talk about. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to spend up to the next 15 minutes because it's quarter of 10 here. I will answer questions. I'll throw stuff back at you. We'll, we'll take a couple tangents if you guys have them. But again, I don't want this to turn into a bunch of nothing because I've got first cup to do in the morning. So if you, as people are thinking of questions to ask, first cup every weekday morning, 6.30 a.m. Eastern on YouTube, only on YouTube. There is a podcast feed. There's even a fun graphic. that Ann made, one of our team members. Thanks, Ann. Also, I'll shout out Andrea. She's been awesome the last couple years. And uh, who else we got? We've got some folks that uh, finished up some projects recently. 
some long-standing projects. Edwin did a, did a lot of stuff for us. So, you know, people, people think I'm the only one doing this sometimes. And thank you. That's an amazing compliment that you think I could do all this work. <laughs> Are there any whistle kick tattoos that you know of? No. Is there an art you'd still like to train that you haven't yet? Wing Chun. Uh, what style have you tried and struggled with the most? Campo. Well, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, what has been your favorite weapon to train in? I love Sai, but right now I'm really enjoy, enjoying Eskrima uh, short sticks because of the, how applicable they are. How do weapons figure into your training? Right now, very little, other than when we do stick at Kempo. Kempo Jiu Jitsu Eskrima class. What kind of coffee do you enjoy uh, on first cup? Well, my first cup of coffee is always black, uh, always caffeinated, generally from Vermont Coffee Company. Historically has been dark coffee, but I've been moving into other coffees because I like the subtlety of the flavor. What is the prize for the first person to get a whistle kick tat? Mm. Um, get pre-approval and I'll pay for it. How much of a routine did you have before competing and what did it consist of? Uh, it depends on what you mean by routine and what time of my life we're talking about. So when I was competing heavily as a teenager, I was training five, six, seven days a week. I wanted to make sure that, that I was... I meant day of competition. Huh? Oh, routine for the day of competition. Okay. Um, I get nervous before competition. So I will figure out what I need to logistically. And then I will put on my headphones and try to maintain a moderately warmed, flexible state as long as I can. Uh, roughly... 30 minutes before I compete, my music will change from kind of calm stuff to more intense stuff. And then I start to get into the zone. And I don't eat. How many recommendations for interviews do you get a week? Uh, I know I know I've given several. Um, depends on the week, probably averages two or three. Sometimes we get people suggesting we interview people we already have, which makes me write them back in a half serious, half sarcastic way to say, that's a great suggestion. And then I give them a link. Uh, want to come try HEMA sometime? Yes, Andrew. Uh, but I feel like training in four size styles is enough right now. <laughs> I can I, I can barely find the time for four and I definitely don't have the time to practice but I know what you guys are doing up there and it's awesome and man I would I would love to do more I would love to do more I, I think it's great Charles is awesome Stacy says I already have it booked um, you have, have an appointment for never settle that's awesome I want to write about the fallacy of a Doctrinal forms on Marshall Journal. Okay, cool. I will look for that. Um, do I still love to compete as I did in the past? Um, no. I loved competing in the past because it was an opportunity for me to feel like I had a place, like I had something that I could do well, and it gave me an identity. And I don't need that anymore. I still value competition. I still enjoy competition and, and, and just competition broadly because I know competition brings out the best in some people and I am included in that. I do believe I will compete in martial arts again. I just don't know when. Uh, furthest you've trained for tra traveled, blah, words, furthest you've traveled for training or competing. Uh, the furthest I've been and trained was California. But the furthest I traveled solely for martial arts was Florida. Yeah, 
Ford is slightly farther than Mobile. Uh... Yes, Andrew. You know what? Let's let's do that. Let's. I'm, I'm telling you, Andrew Smith, we're going to do that. Uh, hi, Justin. Justin's on. Justin, you missed when we were talking about you. <sighs> Greatest martial arts accomplishment outside of whistle kick. Hmm. Well, if it's outside of whistle kick, we're going back a ways. Um... Hmm. I think I want to think about that one. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask for Matt, I'm going to ask that you post that on a, on our first cup episode so I can, I can have a little bit of time to think about that. Uh, do I have any post competition or tournament activities, rituals to unwind? So when I'm done competing and, and I speak specifically to forms, I need usually close to an hour to come back to reality. Um, I go to a pretty intense place and to unwind takes a while. So I generally will just kind of go off and be by myself and just sit and relax and breathe. And once I have my breath back, I tend to walk a lot. Pacing might be a better word. What has been my most influential instructor to date? Uh, it's funny you say that. She's she's watching. Uh, Sensei Beth Bilat. Uh, it's all right, Justin. You can watch the the replay. Thank you, Laura. Laura says my forms are awesome, which is very kind of her. Uh, yeah, I've got my eye on on some on some forms that I think might do well for me. Um, maybe maybe I'll have Justin teach me one. We gotta get together soon. Justin, you owe me an email. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got everything done here. So, all right. So here's what's gonna happen with this. For those of you that came in late, this video will be saved. It'll be reposted on Facebook, so you can watch it whenever. We are also going to post it over on YouTube. I will also make sure that the audio feed of that gets cut over to the martial arts radio podcast feed as episode 400. I'm hoping that will happen tomorrow, but I can't promise. Um, sometimes getting these videos down and moved over can be cumbersome. Of course, they're videos. We're going to do it in high def and that takes a little time. How do you act react during an interview when a guest says something you don't agree with or makes you uncomfortable? Nobody said anything that made me really uncomfortable. Not Nothing like you know, maybe standoffish or, you know, feeling gross. But when I don't agree with something someone says, most of the time I just don't respond because the show isn't about me. When I interview someone and, and, I, and I say this, I don't know that everyone believes me. If I bring somebody on as a, as a guest, that episode is for them. It's about them. I want their story. And there have been times where it felt like finding out more about why they think or feel or do that thing by challenging them, by expressing my own opinion, makes sense. But that's not usually the case. I want to make sure that when I'm helping someone tell their story, which is what I see my job as, that I'm giving them the opportunity, the, the space to tell their story. Not everyone likes that or believes that. That's fine. You can have your own podcast and do it your way. <laughs> cool. All right. This has been fun. Thank you. Thank you. Here's to another 100 episodes. Maybe we'll have to do something different for 500. 500 is kind of a big deal. I don't know too many podcasts that get to 500. There are shows that I've been listening to for years that the show has now passed in episode count. And that feels very strange.
because these were, I'm fidgeting with this pen, these were interviewers or content, you know, just shows that I looked up to that, especially in the early days of Whistlekick, I, I said, you know, I, I want to do something of this caliber. And maybe we haven't passed them in terms of quality or listeners or, or, or other things. But we got more shows. Put more content out. A couple reminders before we go. Uh, code 400 gets you, I'll just tell you, it's 25% off. Code 400 gets you 25% off everything at the store until, I don't know, like two more hours. So you should do that. If you're watching this later, sorry, you missed out. Um, what else? Follow us on social media. We are at Whistlekick on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. If you want to email me directly, jeremy at whistlekick.com. I love your feedback. If you have a guest suggestion, there's a form at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Um, don't forget... A lot of our sparring gear, a lot of our products are on Amazon. No code there, though. And I, I think that's it. I think that's it. So some of you have been in here the whole time. Thank you. That's awesome. I appreciate the support. And those of you that haven't, I appreciate your support. I appreciate everyone. This show and this company are bigger and better because of you. And I really think that we're doing some great things for the martial arts. So thank you for your help in doing that. And I know it's going to be backwards, but I'm putting my head on backwards to remind you, even though the letters are backwards, never settle. Uh, it's, it's become my mantra. So thank you, everyone. I'm going to go to bed now. <laughs> Have a great night.